Few people realize that Ireland's marine territory spans over 220 million acres. That's 10 times the landmass of the country itself. It's home to everything from small fish and crustaceans to ocean giants, including the basking shark. Basking sharks are the second largest fish on the planet. These giant filter feeders are frequently over eight meters long and feed on plankton at the surface. But sightings have declined in many locations where they were formerly abundant, largely due to over-exploitation and even dedicated culling efforts. The species is now classified as globally endangered. Yet in some areas of Ireland, basking shark sightings are increasing. They are thought to come here to feed and possibly mate along Ireland's west coast every spring and early summer. In 2022, basking sharks were protected in Ireland. And in 2024, Ireland's first marine park was announced in a region critical for basking sharks. However, risks to basking sharks still persist. Overlap between marine megafauna and maritime activities is a topic of increasing concern. Thank you. Our team of scientists from Oregon State, Stanford University, and Trinity College Dublin, in partnership with local collaborators, have been studying this iconic species off the coast. All right. All right. We use cutting edge technology to study their movements, behavior, and physiology. In April 2024, our team attached a camera-enabled biologging tag, essentially a souped-up Fitbit with a camera, to a seven-meter-long basking shark near the Blasket Islands in southwest Ireland. Immediately after tagging, the shark resumes feeding at the surface, filtering tiny plankton out of the water. But about six hours later, the shark attempts a quick evasive maneuver. A boat keel cuts across the back of the shark, just behind the dorsal fin, and the shark tumbles through the prop wake. Here is the strike slowed down to 20%. The keel can be seen again here. After the strike, the shark immediately increases its tailbeat frequency for 30 seconds, powering down to the seafloor. The animal has visible boat paint, damage to the skin, and a red abrasion on its back where the keel hit it. But no telltale gashes. The shark swims along the seafloor into deeper water for the next seven hours, without feeding. At this point, the tag popped off and our team collected the data. The change in behavior following the strike is highly significant for a number of reasons. First, the shark stopped feeding for at least seven hours, from the time of the strike until the tag popped off. The shark survived the initial strike and didn't show any major injury that we typically associate with boat strikes. This suggests that these type of interactions, though significantly impactful to the animal, can be quite hard to detect. Lastly, we don't know the final state of the shark. Though we know from the data that it survived the first seven hours following the strike, we don't know the long-term consequences of the injury. More research is needed to determine how prevalent ship strikes are in the marine park and other basking shark hotspots along Ireland's coastline. Any protective measures the park provides for basking sharks such as a conservation action plan, could be invaluable. Additionally, a legally binding code of conduct and formal management plan should be established to protect this species throughout Irish waters.